today. So if you're in need of something today, you need to come up front and allow God to move in your life because he is a God of impossibility. There's nothing he cannot do if you will allow it. Hallelujah, Jesus. I believe God's going to do great things today in this place. Hallelujah. Oh, we have some special needs. Brother Curtis. Brother Dupre, Sister Proctor, Brother Mark, Andrew and Emily Lewis, Daisy Morrison, and 
Haley Faust. And if you look on the back of your bulletin, there's some other needs, and they're just as special. But we know a God who can meet each and every need mentioned here. Oh, we love you, Lord. We praise your great name, oh God. There's nothing you cannot do, Lord God. We pray for Brother Curtis, Lord. Brother Dupre, Lord Jesus. Sister Proctor, touch him, Lord God. Brother Mark, hallelujah. Andrew and Emily Lewis. Daisy Warson. Haley Fast, Lord God. We pray upon each and every one of these needs that you'll move in every one of them, Lord God. There's nothing you cannot do. And we thank you for it, Lord. We praise you for what you're going to do, Lord God. Have your way in this service, Lord. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now 
Sister Olivia, where it says echo. Hallelujah. I'm going to wait till she gets it up there. I want us to not only hear it, I want us to see it. It says, God, we echo your authority. You know, I don't know about you, but this is the way that my mind works. Sister Sherry, what, what that means to me is that God, every time we're facing a situation, Every time we're facing a sickness or a battle or a mountain, God's up there saying, I got this, I got this, I got this, I got this. And all he's waiting for is for us to say, man, God's got this, God's got this, God's going to see us through, God's faithful. But so many times we hang our head and we say, God, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know how this is going to work out. But if we could tune our ears to heaven's frequency, we can hear God saying, I got this, I got this. You can walk in authority. You can walk in victory. You can stand firm. Is there anybody that wants to echo God's authority today as they sing it one more time? Can you just worship looking at your situation differently today? situations and if you could ever get a hold of what I just said you could speak into their life you can speak to them and you can say hey can you hear the sound there's a sound from another world today I don't know who I'm talking to whether it's here or whether it's online but somebody needs to hear me today Jesus is trying to tell you I've got you hallelujah hallelujah Praise God. We're so glad to have Brother Proctor with us today. Hallelujah. If he will begin to make his way to this pulpit. Hallelujah. There's not a Sunday that has gone by, Brother Proctor, that you have not ministered to our hearts and our minds. I know it's just not around my lunch table, but I, when I leave here for days to come, we're talking about the messages and the words and, and sometimes just the jokes. Hallelujah, but Brother Proctor, if you'll come this morning, hallelujah, and 
preach to us. Hallelujah. We need to pray every service that the Lord will make our hearts and our minds pliable. That he could shape us and mold us to what he would have us to be. Because Brother Colin, the world wants to harden us. But if we allow him to, God, he can soften us. Hallelujah. Are we going to worship with Brother Proctor today? Hallelujah. Am I on? Beam me up, Scotty. You may be seated. Well, it's good to be back here again today. Beautiful day. I was walking around the side of the building while I go had to go out to my car, and, and I was reminded, <clears throat> Savoy, where the wind always blows. It doesn't matter how hot it gets. You can find you a shade tree. You'll get a little breeze somewhere. And uh, so it's a unique area. Well, the Lord's good to us in spite of us. Somebody... My neighbor told me here a while back I did something for somebody. I don't even know what it was, when it was. I just remember what she said. She said, uh, John, God's going to give you what you deserve. I said, I hope to God he don't. <laughs> God have mercy. Don't give me what I deserve. Give me your mercy. Give me your patience. Give me your kindness. You know, I've, I've got a problem that I'm, I'm just a little bit more too honest sometimes, and I'm I'm a very, I don't mean to come across that way, but I, I'm pretty blunt in what I say, and I don't mean it rude at any, at any time. I just want you to understand, there's an old Cherokee proverb that says, plain speech better understood. If you just tell it like it is, and, uh, but some people can't tell it, can't take it like it is. They've got to always see something bad in what you said, and and somebody told me one time, said, y'all talking about me? I said, what a boring subject. What makes, you, what makes you think we're talking about you? Come on, you need to get up off of yourself. You're not that important. You know, we get this feeling sometimes, if we're not careful, that we are indispensable. And we have it in churches that sometimes people get to thinking, you know, if I were to leave, uh, they just wouldn't be much of a church there. But the problem is, if we want to know how important we really are, you just ball your fist up and stick it into a gallon of water, pull your fist out, and however long that hole lasts, that's how important we in our flesh really are. Not. You know, uh, the, most, uh, the most important words that will be said after my funeral, now tell it like it is, we gotta, you know, you're going to have to admit it, but the most important words that will be spoken after my funeral, 30 minutes after they leave the cemetery, you know what they are? Pass the potato salad again, please. You said that's morbid. That's facts. Because life goes on. When I'm gone, life goes on for somebody else. I'm 68, and... Uh, and my wife, she turns 71 tomorrow. She's uh, three years, of course, older than myself. And, and uh, she, she, uh, I was talking to her this morning about how she is feeling. She's not doing too well. But uh, she has never lost her praise in her heart. She doesn't feel like saying much. She doesn't talk much. She just sits there. But every now and then you hear a whisper of Jesus, you're so precious. Come on, whatever goes on in my life and in your life, you cannot afford to lose the praise of God. It's not God's fault that I messed up. It's not God's fault that I sinned. It's not God's fault that I didn't do what I need to do. It's my fault. But it, what we can do is repent and get up and go again. Just get up and go again. Come on, I'm talking to somebody right now. You, you know, you, we get this idea about sin. The first thing we, we think about, and if we're not careful, is something perverted on an immoral issue. That's not the truth. Uh, sin is just simply missing the mark. You just didn't do what you're supposed to do, but there's two types of sin. There's a sin of omission and a sin of commission. You, you committed wrong. 
but then you also, you did not do the right thing. That's just as wrong. You know, when Paul said, be not drunk on wine where it's in excess, be not filled with wine where it's in excess, you know, if it's wrong to be filled with wine, then it's just as wrong not to be filled with the Spirit. Y'all hang on. We'll get somewhere at the wall. Don't get nervous. And pastor's not here. Bishop's not here. But I got my back up here. They brought a substitute school teacher in the other day. He's a young black man. And man, I was intimidated just by looking at him. He only struck me right here, but he's about that broad. He had arms, looked like, man, I, got, I, I walked in, I looked at them teenagers, he said, mouth off now, I got my back up with me. But, uh, man, I said, that, that dude didn't get anywhere like that by just sitting around eating Cracker Jacks and drinking malt. He had to work at it. You know, you're not going to get anywhere. I'm not going to get anywhere with God by sitting around and wishing. We've got to work at it. Come on. Faith without works is dead. Your faith is dead if you're not doing something. You've got to work at it. You say, well, I tried, but I slipped. I tried, but I missed. Come on, get up and go again. Come on, I'm here to tell you. Somebody asked me the other day, said, how in the world can you walk 10 miles? I said, well, it's really simple. I said, the first time when I first started doing it, I said, three miles, I thought I was going to die. But then after that, I got to get going. And finally one day, I just hit it. Next thing I know, I'm walking 10 miles. And somebody said, but how do you do it? I said, well, what you do, you take one foot, you put it here. And then you take the other foot, you put it there, and you just keep doing that for about three hours. You've got ten miles in. Now you say, well, I can do that in an hour and a half. Well, get out there and do it. We want to watch you. It's easy to say what you can do or what you can't do when you're not doing anything. But when you're really trying and you're in the heat of the battle and the struggle's going on, that's when the rubber meets the road. Come on. It's time to get excited about what God said he's going to do. And God's going to do things around here. Come on, somebody. Hear me this morning. We're going to still talk about the same thing we talked about last week. Devil, put it back and leave it alone. Come on. It's time to get serious about this thing. Oh, give me a key. Oh, come on. Give me a run there. Give me a run, brother. Come on, I feel the soul coming out of me. Somebody asked me one time this morning, they said, what you going to preach about, preacher? I said, I'm going to tell them, I'm going to say, you ain't got to sing, you ain't got to shout. Just turn them pockets inside out. <laughs> well, let's go to the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 1. Same chapter we read last week, same, same uh, book in uh, 1 Samuel 5. And the Philistines took the ark of God and brought it unto Ebenezer, brought it from Ebenezer unto Ashdod. And when the Philistines took the ark of God, they brought it into the house of Dagon and set it by Dagon. When they of they Ashdod arose early on the morrow, behold, Dagon was falling upon his face before the before the ark of the ark of the Lord. And they took Dagon and set him in his place again. Remember what I said last week: I wouldn't serve a God that couldn't get up on his own two feet. If you got a God, you got to prop up. He's not a God. You're the God. You got more power than He's got. Come on, we need a God that's more powerful than we are, and we've got one. His name is Jesus. And when they arose, when they arose early on the morrow morning, behold, Dagon was falling upon his face to the ground. Come on, he back down there again. Come on, no God can stand before our God. No way, no way, Jose. It can't be done. And the head of Dagon and both the palms of his hands were cut off uh, upon the threshold. Only the stump of Dagon was left to him. Jesus, help us today in Jesus' name, and you may be seated. <coughs> it said only the, the, <coughs> both the palms of his hands. We, we get all excited about laser surgery. Well, uh, well, Proverbs said there's no new thing under the sun. Laser surgery been around for a long time. The word of God reached that, reached through that golden box of uh, that box overlaid with gold, and like a laser beam, just cut off the hands of Dagon. What he was he doing? He was telling him, and he was telling them, "There's no God can stand before me. There's no God that can stop me. Come on, somebody needs to get a hold of this today. Nothing can keep you from living for God." 
Nothing can stop you from touching God if you got to want to, but you got to have a want to. Come on, somebody in here, get a want to. He, he's gone, but he was one of my favorite comedians, old Jerry Clyer. I love Jerry Clyer. He had that old southern Mississippi tone about him. And he said, I looked at my schedule. And I got a good friend, pastors in Sugartown, Louisiana. He reminds me so much of Jerry Clyde when he's talking. And he, 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 he come to church one night. Now, we're talking about one of them backwood churches. And he come to church. He had cowboy boots uh, that was turned up on the toe. And I looked at him. He had an old shirt on, an old blue jeans on. He looked at, he looked at the folks. He said, now, folks, we done looked at our schedule. And the schedule tonight is to have a move of God. And a move of God we did have. Come on, I'm here to tell you, God's not concerned about how pretty I am. He's not concerned about how pretty your dress is. He's not concerned about how well your suit fits you. He's not concerned about how fine you look, how sexy you look. He's concerned about how, about how much you really want to get a hold of him. You've got to have a want to. Old Jerry Clyde was talking about he saw an eighth of an inch yellow jacket made an 1800 pound Brahma bull jump over an eight strand barbed wire fence. Why? Because he had a want to. I'm going to tell you something. You get somebody with a want to, hell cannot stop them. The hell cannot stop a church that has a want to. Come on, God, give me a want to. Come on, somebody stand up and say, yeah. God, give me a want to. I, mean, I may have already told y'all this. I don't know. I, I don't have all the time. I got some timers. Sometimes I remember who I am and sometimes I don't. And everybody talking about that. They get older. They say, I'm, I'm, uh, when you get older, you go to one room and try to remember why you're there. Well, I've been old for a long time because I've done that far back as I remember. I was cooking the other day, and I'll be honest with you, I'm pretty tired this morning. I got off of work uh, 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 Friday night, and when I went home, I was so tired I couldn't eat. I had to go to bed. When I woke up, I got up and ate something. But I said, my wife, she's not able to do this, and I know it. I've got to do it for her. So I washed four loads of clothes and dried them and put them up. And then I swept and mop and scrubbed the bathroom. I got everything squeaky clean. And then I said, well, it's time to go to bed. Oh, wait a minute. I forgot to, I forgot to fold the towels and wash rags. So back up again. Let's get it all done. I got up yesterday morning, mowed the yard, got everything going. I'm a little bit tired, but you know what? This morning, I've got to want to. i got to want to to see God. I want to see God move in this place today. Come on, somebody. That's it. Praise him. I got tickled at a young man yesterday. He said, man, it's rough, ain't it? I said, what you talking about, son? He said, man, it's just rough. I said, how old are you, young man? He said, 47. I said, son, I'm 68 years old, and I can still do 10 miles a day if I want to. Now, what's wrong with you? He said, you're not no 68. Oh, I love to hear people say that. You don't look 68. Man, my wife said, I have never seen anybody as vain as you are. She walked into the, she walked into, and the rest of you men, if you just tell the truth, you're the same way. Thank you, and the rest of you are lying. <laughs> and let me show you why men tickle me. They talk about women getting on those show places. Or, I mean, on those, what are you, those show mirrors when they try. And they, but I've seen men walk by, and when they go get by, they look around. And, well, when you let it down, it's still swagging, buddy. <laughs> Come on. Men don't even like me no more. I get so tickled at men at churches. You know, we got women that are ten times more spiritual than men, and that's not the will of God. I thought you women be running the aisles by now. Come on, the will of God teaches that a man is supposed to be the leader. 
then why in the name of God have we got women being used in the gifts of the Spirit and being just sitting there? Well, I'm here to tell you somebody wrote a book and they said the reason why women are used more so is because women are more sensitive. And I said hogwash baloney on that. God give a law, a pray precept. And he said the man is to be the leader. Come on, men. We need men with a backbone. We need men that can stand up. We need men that can get a hold of God. We don't need a bunch of wimps. We don't need a bunch of sissies. We need men. We need men like the prophet Elijah had the heartbeat of a volcano and the voice of a thunderstorm. When he spoke, heaven shut up, and it did not give forth his rain. But he spoke, heaven opened up, and it brought forth its rain. Come on, man. Come on, men. Let me tell you something. There's a place where God wants to put a man and put a woman that whenever the devil comes in against you like a flood, the Lord, like a standard, will raise a standard against him. Come on, son. Somebody hear me this morning. God knows where you're at. And so they brought the ark of God from Ebenezer and Ashdod, and they set it right by that big mean God. Sometimes God will put you in places just to see what you're going to do and how you're going to react. Don't be hollering the devil about everything. We need to understand sometimes it's not the devil. It's just life. Everybody gets sick from time to time. Everybody has heartaches from time to time. Everybody has sad days from time to time. Everybody gets depressed from time to time. And you're walking around saying, not me. That's because you're dead from the neck up. Because everybody has a bad day from time to time. But everybody's got the opportunity to look at that, like they look at the ark of the Lord and say in the word of God, it says, I am the Lord thy God, I change not. It may not be a good day today, but it's still a good day to praise the Lord. And devil, you're not going to take the word of God out of my heart. You can't have it, devil. God put it there and you can't take it out. Teenagers amaze me. I love teenagers. I mean, I work with them. I have so much fun with them. But parents that are raising teenagers, I went through the same thing, and you, you're scared to death about certain things. Well, you need to realize one thing, Mama. That child belongs to God. It doesn't belong to you, and he knows how to take care of it. He knows how to, he knows how to maneuver. You know, you, you, you're saying... Uh, I, I, I was watching a parent one time getting on to a child, a little bitty kid. And boy, they just, you need to grow up. You need to, I said, why don't, and I looked at mine and I said, why don't you act 21 when they're not but five? That's a problem there. When you dress up a little girl and make her look like she's 25 and she's not but six, there's a problem. You want to tell you what the problem is, Mama? You're living out your fantasies in that little girl, and you're going to destroy that little girl. What you need to do is let her be a little girl. I'm tired of seeing girls are trying to dress like they're, trying to dress like they're 35 when they're just 15. Something wrong with this picture. I don't like what you said. Big deal. Neither does the devil. He doesn't like a lot of things I say. And I'm here to tell you that God knows how to take care of us. God knows how to provide for us. And God knows how to maneuver in our life. I'm sure I said this the other day. I don't remember if I did or not. But I, 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 when I had a, a car wreck several years ago, they had to, had to cut me out of it. I've had both knees replaced, got metal in my neck, and, and I've, I've had uh, all kind of situations. I had infections, nearly died, and, and, uh, it, it, and I, 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 know, I know I mentioned it once, but I feel like I need to tell it again. Hey, I listen to your same songs. <laughs> listen to my same stories. And so anyway... I'm out there mowing that yard, and I'm just barely crippling. But you know what I was saying the whole time? It won't always be this way. 
It won't always be this way. Come on. The first year, it was horrible. That second year, a little bit better. But the third year when I hit it, you know what I did? I cranked that mower. I said, it's showtime. I got up and I hit it as hard as I could. And I mowed that front yard in 17 minutes. I never mowed it that quick. I'm here to tell you, when I got through, I started jumping up and down like a kid at a ball game. And started, yeah! Yeah, I know the neighbors thought I was crazy. Yeah, I tell you I was crazy because it won't always be this way. Somebody needs to stand up and tell the devil, it won't always be this way. Come on, devil, it won't always be like this. Come up, God knows what he's doing. Everything's going to be all right. See, you have the authority and the power to call things that be not as though they were. Now, let's, let's clarify this. I don't mean you walk around and say, I was with a preacher and his wife one time. She said, I'm believing God to give me that house. I laughed on the inside because they're going on cruises twice a year. I've never been on one, but they told I don't think you can go on a cruise for twenty dollars, I think it's two two fifty two hundred two uh, twenty five hundred and up. And that's a cheap seat. And then they go uh, to the mountains and they go on vacation. They go and I'm thinking you want to believe God to give you a nice house when you're just blowing and squandering squandering money every time you turn around. Come on, let's use some common sense. Duh. Come on, but whenever you're doing the right thing and you know you're doing the right thing, just keep on keeping on. It may be a little bit rough right now, but God's boat is fixing to come in and it won't always be like it is. You know what? Something's bugging me. i got a duck tail back here and I can feel that rascal tray. I'm going to bust that eye. Come on, somebody. Bust her eye. But, if, but, you know, we've got authority with the Word of God. As long as we're obeying the Word of God. Now, Romans chapter 4, verse 17, pull that up there, would you? While you're getting that ready, let me just say this this morning, that, that uh, we have authority. Somebody say authority. authority. You're not just a church member. You're part of the body of Jesus Christ. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him in whom he believed, even God which quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Now we're supposed to think like God. He, God called things that be not as though they were. It's not there, but it's there. I read a book one time a preacher wrote, and he, he was praying. He was in South uh, uh, South Korea, and he, uh, I think it was Dr. Cho, and uh, he said he asked the Lord to give him a, a bicycle and, and a desk, and he prayed, and he prayed, and nothing happened. Finally, he went back to the Lord. He said, you told me that. He, you, you didn't tell me what kind you wanted. You don't want just anything. He said, I want a swim-made American bicycle. I want a, a swivel back chair and mahogany desk. And he kept praying. Nothing happened. And then finally the Lord spoke to him again and he said, he said, you haven't, you haven't proclaimed it. He said, I went to the pulpit that night. I said, I want to thank God for an uh, American-made swim bicycle, for a mahogany desk and a swivel back chair. And everybody got excited and said, show us. The office is empty. And he said, the Lord said, open the door. And show them. He said, I opened the door and they laughed and they said, There's nothing here. He said, The Lord quickened me. And I looked at that man. I said, Did anybody see we you see you when you was in your mother's womb? But yet you was here. Did anybody see you before you hit the altars? But yet you was here. In the mind of God, you was here. I'm telling you, in the mind of God, I see an American-made swim bicycle. I see a mahogany desk. I see a swivel back chair. And in just a few weeks, he had what delivered to him? An American 
and made swim bicycle. I'm a hogging desk and a swivel back chair. You've got authority to call things that be not as though they were. I was preaching in, in uh, Arkansas, Grabber Ridge, Arkansas. I mentioned Brother Charles. He'd been deceased for several years now, but I was preaching for him. I was there nine and a half weeks, and we had some great things that happened, had great revival. But I heard a man's name over and over, Massey, Vassy, not Massey, but Vassy, Vassy, Vassy. He retired from the Air Force. He was a huge, he was a black man. He was a great big guy. And I, I'd never met him, never seen him. But I heard Vassy, pray for Vassy, pray for Vassy. Well, I'm in the hotel room that day, and I was laying on my back. I was talking to the Lord, and I just stopped. And I did something. Some of y'all are going to think I'm nuts. But have you even tried it yet? I just started talking. I said, Vassy, 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 I know you hear me. This is the Lord talking to you. You be at church tonight. You pray back through tonight. We're sitting on the platform. Service is going on. Brother Charles leans over to me, and he says, uh, my God, this is a miracle. I said, what is it? He said, you know who that is? I said, never, never seen him. He said, that's Vassy. I said, oh, oh, him. I talked to him this afternoon. He said, you talked to him this afternoon, but you never met him? Proctor, you're crazy. I said, he's here, isn't he? I told him to come to church. I know some of y'all are having a problem with this. Folks, I've been, living, I've been doing this for many, many years, and I've watched God do things that the people say won't happen. You've got to get beyond your doubts and your fears and realize that the devil's trying to take the authority of God's word out of your mouth, uh, and you got to tell him, I see things on the horizon. I see things happening. I see things taking place. Come on, somebody. It's time to get a hold of God. Well, I tried it, Brother Proctor. It didn't work for me. It didn't work for me the first time either. But I just kept on. By reason of use, just kept on exercising. You know, you got to exercise faith. You got to exercise your prayer bone. You got to exercise your thought structure. You can't sit around and be naked. Come on, the Word of God is the Word of God. As a man thinks in his heart, so he is. You don't need somebody to come in here and patty cake you and tell you, man, bless your heart, you've had a rough time. Anybody ever been in the military? What branch was you in, brother? Who? Air Force. I tell you what, those, those blue angels did their part in World War II. They flew and they did all kind of bombing raids. But, man, I get so tickled when I get around, and I mentioned it already, old Chessy Puller. Anybody ever heard of Chessy Puller? He was so mean, he was too mean for the Marine Corps. He was the only Marine to ever receive five Navy crosses in history. They was in a major battle. They were surrounded by the North Koreans and the Chinese. And one of his lieutenants walked up to him and they said, Colonel, we're going to have to surrender. And he said a few choice words that I'm not allowed to say in the pulpit or out of the pulpit. But he looked at them and he said, did you want to live forever? Shoot any direction. You'll hit something. Come on, just start firing the word of faith anywhere you go. You'll hit doubt over here. You'll hit unbelief over there. You'll hit fear over there. And they fought their way out. Out. Come on, somebody. You can fight your way out. But the devil stole the ark of the covenant of Philistine, but God, but God, but that we're talking about the devil here. We, we, we're typifying this thing, and you got to understand it was not that box. It was not that vessel of manna, the rod, or, or, but, but it was the word of God that he's trying to get out. And I'm here to tell you the devil's attacking you today, and he's trying to get you to let up on the word of God. It's not time to let up. It's time to strengthen. It's time to talk about it. It's time to say they're coming back. Come on, it's time to say they're coming back. When I pastored that church in Okmulgee, Oklahoma, 
I had me a, I had me a, it cost me a pretty penny, but I had me a little banner made up. I said, come home. That's all it said was come home. I told the people, you leave people alone. They'll be coming back. I kept on saying they're coming back. They're coming back. Directly, here come one. Here come another one. And someone made mention. They said every time I passed the church, I would turn my head and cry because I knew that's where I needed to be. But I'm so glad I'm home. Come on, somebody. The backsliders are coming back. Your children are coming back. It's the word of God that worketh richly in your heart. Come on, somebody. Hear me. They're coming back. Cannot afford to go by how you feel. If you go by how you feel, you won't even get up out of the bed some mornings. Don't you just love getting up and going to work every morning? Oh boy, I'm getting to go to work. I want to get up, but sometimes I don't want to go to work. But you know, something drives me to go to work. Something, something just to drive about me. Somebody, and, and, and they mentioned, they said, man, he, he don't ever miss. I don't, they didn't hire me to miss. They hired me because they needed help. You ever notice the ones that don't get to raise a lot of times? I know there are political things that go on. I've been around it. But, you know, you still got to do the right thing. But there will be some people that don't do, they don't do squat and they don't they show up half the time and they're the first ones to complain because they didn't get a raise because they're, they're this one, that, and that one. And they complain all the time that here's somebody showing up all the time and doing the best they can and doing all they can. And then you look up and they're being blessed and they're being rewarded because they worked hard for it. You know, we've got a great superintendent, our school district district does and a great a great district board and they give us bonuses every every time we turn around we're getting some kind of a bonus you know what that does that doesn't make me want to stay home and curl up and say well I got me a fat check today uh -uh. it makes this boy say hey make those shores those floors shine better get up and do a little bit better come on somebody we need to exercise pay What burns me up when I'm talking to somebody and I help the guy get on, and I, I, mean, I got him, I got him, I got him, I got him good. I like him. He still likes me, but he's not there no more. He ended up getting fired. I told him he was gonna get fired. He'd he'd rush in there and do about two hours work, and he well, let me just tell you what he'd do. He'd come in, punch in at ten o'clock, and then leave, be gone for two hours. Come back, do a little bit of work, go get his hair cut, go do this, go do that. Then come back and sit in the car and go to sleep. And his little working partner, she's not there either. They supposed to come in at eleven o'clock. She punch in at eleven o'clock and then start eating her lunch. She's supposed to have went to work, huh? Do you know that's stealing? You're stealing from the company. What's up a week? I said, you're stealing from the company. And then he said, they don't pay me enough to do all this. I said, you knew what you was going to get paid when you come here. And you know what was expected when you come here. You got the attitude of a little boy. You're supposed to be a grown man. Grow up a little bit, buddy. He said, you make me mad. I said, I'm fixing to really make you mad. I stuck my neck out for you. And you've been a failure because you're lazy, L-A-Z-Y. You know, lazy people don't pray. Lazy people don't talk faith. Lazy people talk doubt all the time. Lazy that people whine and complain all the time. But you get a man and woman's got faith, they just believe anything. I've seen people that have faith and they just get up and just shake themselves and it doesn't matter what's going on. They're talking about what God's going to do. Old Maggie Moss, she's going to be going on to her reward for years and years and years now. But old Maggie Moss, she was at the cemetery one time. That woman shouted over everything. You could say boo, and she'd start shouting. She walked real fast. And then when she got ready to sit down, she just slid in. Even when she was older, she just did the same thing. But you didn't go to Maggie Moss's house and say, pray for me. Uh-uh, baby. No, don't be the fool. 
She grabbed you by the hand. She said, it's time to pray now. And before you left, you done had a 45-minute prayer meeting. And that woman was giving it all she got. But whenever she died, the pastor started reading names off. My name was on that list. My wife's name was on that list. And her daughter said every morning she got up and she called every name up on that list. And God give them strength. God give them faith. Help. Come on. Somebody, you need to encourage yourself in the Lord. Give me the grace. Give me the strength to stand. When she, when, when Ella May, who's her daughter's name, she's 88 now. Some of my closest friends. Alton's 89, I think, 88, 89. That's a, they're a year difference. And she was standing at the graveside of her husband cleaning around it and she said I don't want to be buried here they don't take care of this place everybody said mama you may not have to be buried maybe the Lord will come and she got to talking about the coming of the Lord and danced all around the grave but let me tell you something unique about Maggie see Maggie Moss was a woman that was acquainted with sorrow and grief she lost her husband she had two babies Two little, all, she had uh, Ella May, and then she had a uh, Monk. May had three. I can't remember uh, exactly how many there were. But whatever it was, I do remember this part. She said, we were just babies, and they tell us the story how that mother was at the house smoking the house. I didn't say smoking in the house, smoking the house. Any of you old-timers really know what that is? That's when they would take smoke and go through the house because it was so hot they couldn't put, couldn't close the windows, and they didn't have screens in those days, and, and they would put smoke in that house and run the mosquitoes out. It was really tough time, and, and they would pour water on those old mattresses uh, and, and just so they could get cool and sleep on the porch. It was so hot. And uh, But Maggie Moss was faithful in her praise and worship. And she's there just uh, uh, worshiping God and praying and you working and picking cotton. And somebody started screaming, the house is on fire. The house is on fire. The house is on fire. And Maggie began to run as hard as she could. She said, my, ki my kids, my kids. Then she looked over to her left and there was her two kids underneath the shade tree playing. And then she began to shout and dance. They said, Maggie, it's okay. You, you got that right, honey? My kids wasn't in it. My kids wasn't in it. I can replace the house. I can replace the car. But I cannot replace the kid. Come on, somebody. It's time to get serious about this. Oh, come on. Let's love him. Let's really love him. Hallelujah to God. You know, marriage counselors tells us, you may be seated, marriage counselor tells us that it takes a marriage couple five to seven years before they really know each other. My wife and I will be married 50 years the 29th of April of this month, and she's still a mystery to me. I don't think after 50 years you know each other. You just know their actions. You know, no, you do know some things. But I, I get tickled at these, these young couples. They get married and they say, we're madly in love. And I just chuckled. I said, give it a few days. We're going to see. Are you in love all the time? You big chickens. You ain't love all the time, baby, and you know it. I just want to come out there and bust eyes. What I want. You know you ain't. I've heard people come up and say, one woman told me, she said, I'm going to get a divorce. I said, why? I'm not happy. I said, what's that got to do with anything? Are you supposed to be happy every day of your life to be married? That's Hollywood. They're getting paid to act like a fool, and you're living like one when you do that. Come on. I'm here to tell you, you're not in love every day. There's days you have disagreements. There's days you just wonder, oh, she looks at you, and you don't. 
She loved you so much she could eat you alive, and 30 minutes later she wishes to God she had him. <laughs> you know what keeps you together? Commitment. You're committed. It doesn't matter how stormy it gets, you're going to stick with it. It doesn't matter how bad it is, you're going to stick with it. It doesn't matter how sick she gets, you're going to stick with it. Come on, I'm a sticker. I'm a sticker. Come on, it may not be the way I want it, but I'm not going to walk off in the middle of it. That's the same thing living for God. You don't feel victory every day. You get up and you feel down and out, but you're a sticker. You're committed to the cause. Put it back, devil, and leave it alone. You may take my health. You may take my, 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 my family. You may take my money. You may take my house. But you're not going to take the word of God out of my heart. Lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. Glory to Dios, Señor. Hallelujah. I was at a church one time I was preaching. I said, Vamos a la vaya, Señor. Bendito le Señor. Bendito le Rey. Praise the Lord. Bless the Lord. Praise the King. Man, they got with it. They started getting all those Mexicans. They come out of the pews. They got on the drums. They got on. And the pastor said, man, you lit that Mexican group up. I said, because I was speaking their language. Let me tell you the language God speaks. Faith. 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 If you want God to move, you've got to talk faith. You can't talk faith today and doubt tomorrow and get anywhere. I don't know how God does what he does. That's not, he didn't tell me to do. figure that out. He just said, follow me. Right. Abraham will follow the Lord and look for a city who built and maker was God and never got there. But he told him, he said, your descendants I'm going to bless. And he said, it'll be like the stars of the heaven and the sands of the sea. You know what he's saying? You're going to have a heavenly family and you're going to have an earthly family. He said, I'm going to bless them. And everybody that blesses you, I will bless. And those that curse you, I will curse. Come on. You cannot get by with cursing God's church and cursing God's people. If you see a brother and sister doing something they shouldn't do, you don't have a right to put down on them. You don't have a right to talk down to them. Come on. You just need to get on your prayer bones and say, God, give them grace to stand. Because the enemy's trying to take the word of God out of their heart. days are going to come. Bad times are going to come. Happens to everybody. Anybody here ever been broke? Remember when we used to take soda pop bottles and sold them for money? Father, I, I'll tell you what, folks. I went back further than that. I stole them. My mother got mad at one of my uncles one time. Of course, mother's gone, the uncle's gone, and uh, the sister's gone. The brother-in-law's gone. They're all they're all deceased. But uh, she said the worst thing she called him that sorry pup. That sorry pup. He got your sister in trouble, and she ended up going nearly going to prison. I said, "What happened, Mama?" She said, well, you never didn't know anything about it, but he, he broke into the jukebox and broke into the cash drawer and got all the money out and filed it on the insurance. When they got to investigating it, he's embezzling the money. He went to prison. I said, he didn't, he didn't break that jukebox open. She said, what? I said, he didn't break that jukebox. I said, he didn't do that. That's not true. She, she said, you was just a baby. How do you know? I said, because I was there. They gave me the crowbar and told me to hit it. I started my crime wave early. And then she really got ticked off. She said, you what? I said, 
Oh, don't worry about it. I said, it's been so long ago. I said, it passed a statute of limitations. I don't have to worry about it. You know, come on, but you know, uh, you're not looking at somebody who was born a saint. You wasn't born a saint. Come on, you was born a sinner. And you repented of your sins and got baptized in his name, got filled with the spirit. You become a child of God. Come on, somebody. You're not going to stay holy because you think you are. You're going to stay holy because you work at it. People are made. I even amaze myself. I even look myself in the mirror now and then. I said, John boy, you amaze yourself. How can you be so stupid? Do you really think that was going to happen? That way? Come on, boy. Think. Somebody say think. think. Had a car burn up one time. Had a man come up to me and told me, hey, man, I can save you some money. I can rebuild that motor for $350. You can't even buy the parts for $350. Can you, Brother Mark? No, you can't buy every part goes into a burn-up motor for $350. You know what I really needed? I need to find one of them boots that kick and put $200 worth of pennies in it and bend over and say, go to it, son. Kick some sense in this boy. And we think we can just do anything, say anything, act any way. And by the way, I ended up having to go to court to even get the piece of junk back because they said I let him have it. It was on his property, and I couldn't go get it. Well, I finally got it back and, and, and finally repented of over being ignorant, and the Lord blessed me with another car. But I'm here to tell you, you cannot go around doing stupid things and expecting great miracles. The devil is a deceiver. He will cheat you out of everything if you'll listen. If you will listen long enough, he'll have you believing you can't do, you can't make it, you're not going to make it. You might as well give it up, throw in the towel. Why? Why does he do that? Because he never attacks anything he doesn't already have, that he doesn't have. Anything he attacks is because he knows you got power inside of you. And he's trying to get the word of God out of you. You say, I'm never tempted. I think I'd get worried about that. Come on, I wouldn't be excited if you say, I don't have any trouble. The devil's not going to attack you when you're already down. He is going to attack you when you're up and ready and you're stronger than you think you are. But you've got to speak the word of God in faith. Well, let's stand and praise the Lord. Come on, let's praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. How does God do what he does? I don't know. That's not my problem. My problem is being sure that I do what he tells me to do. Come right ahead, little sister. Tickle those ivories. How old are you? 19. When was I 19? I was 15. Wow. You wouldn't even have thought. Your mom and dad wouldn't even have thought. But you know, people don't change. The nature of people don't change. I get so tickled at those kids, and they'll do something. I say, you're not fooling me. I said, we did the same thing when we was in school. What makes y'all think y'all special and y'all come up with something different? I said, you don't have nothing different. You're just going at it differently. But my heart goes out to you young people because you're dealing with things today we didn't have to deal with. We didn't have social media. I, you know, I have a lot of friends on Facebook and, and, I, and I got to looking at this one person. I wasn't looking, but I got to notice. I said, you know what? I know Filipino people are little, but boy, this one's really little. And then they, 
I, I began to notice and finally I, I just sent him a message. I said, how old are you? And she says, I'm 12 years old. I said, you're too young to be on Facebook. And I deleted her and blocked her. I don't need to be on Facebook with little kids. Come on, somebody at least grunt. Mom and Dad, you don't need to let your 12-year-old be on Facebook. They don't need to be on social media. They to battle enough as it is. We got a monitor. You got nonsense. Come on, use your head, but use your brain. That thing's not a hat rack. It's a it can it, it holds it holds a brain. And I told my daughter, I said, I know you don't understand. I know you don't comprehend. I know you're thinking like a child. You let me be the adult. But when you let those kids get in, get involved in adult things, expect heartache. We got a little girl there at school. Izzy's her name. I don't really know her name. That's why I call her Izzy. She is the sweetest little kid. I mean, very polite. And so last year she asked me, she said, she's so quiet, she whispered. I said, honey, you got to speak up. I can't even hear you. She said, what is your name? I said, my name is Ani Wamon Agintasi. She said, huh? I said, well, that's my name in our language, Cherokee language. I said, but my name in English is John Wayman Proctor. Why do you ask? She said, I see you every day and never knew who you was. Here's why it pays to be careful how you treat me. She goes home and she tells her mother, she said, Mom, there's a janitor there and that is the sweetest man I've ever met. He always asks me, how's your day going? And always talks to me. And every now and then she'll, she'll hug me and I, I make sure they're in front of the teachers and I'm careful about those things. And you say, well, you're too careful. No, I don't think I'm too careful. You hear me? You can't be too careful. And she said, Mom, she's the sweetest, he is the sweetest man, and, and I just love him. She said, Well, you know who that is, don't you? I said, No, that's your Aunt Cindy's brother. She said, We related? She said, No, that's your Aunt Cindy's brother. You're not related. It's kind of distant by marriage and when she saw me the next time I said I didn't know that you was my my sister's niece yeah she asked her mom she said you think we could kind of just drop by sometime I said tell her no I don't drop by people's houses and I don't want people to drop especially kids I I'm like that gorilla on Facebook. It said the best thing about being the way you become a daddy is be grumpy and old. My daughter took a picture of her myself with my hat on this morning. She said, this is the way it's done. She's always got to steal the show. That kid. But, you know, she was out with her pastor and his wife last night at a restaurant, and she's an international author. She has written several, I think she's on her fourth book, She's Zoomed in Canada. She's doomed, Zoomed in other places. Australia, she's uh, supposed to have flown to Canada and, and, and part of somewhere in Africa, but probably COVID, it stopped everything. But her pastor said, uh, do you do know you're talking to an international uh, uh, author, don't you? And he said, no, I didn't. And she said, Dad, I sold five books right there in the restaurant. It's called Apostolic Men Empowered, Apostolic Women Empowered, Apostolic Family Empowered, and now she's on something else but I told her I said Jen I am so proud of you you have given everything you've got to it she said dad when I got away from God and I didn't live for God I lived I partied hard but I made up my mind when I come back to God I was going to live hard can I tell you this morning it's not it's hard to live for God when you live for him easy but it's easy to live for God when you live for him hard oh, look, come on let's come around the front now come on Come on, don't just stand there. Come on. Nobody's going to bite you. Come on, let's come praising the Lord. Devil, you can't have the Word of God. You can't have it.
somebody in another town or another country or another place? Why couldn't you need something and say, God, I'm going to proclaim this and I'm going to give you praise and I'm, I'm going to give you glory and, and, and just trust and believe that it's going to appear. Why can't you have your healing? Because the adversary says that God can heal them and God can heal that one, but, but why not you? Because see, that, that is... That is where doubt begins to creep in because we think it's possible for everybody else. 
But Sister Shabria, what if we made up in our mind that, you know what, that was a great story, but that can be my story. That can be my testimony of my healing, of my saved child, of, of my saved family member. That, that can be my financial need met. That can be exactly what, what I have need of. They're going to sing that song again. And I want to challenge all of us today to really believe for it. To really say, you know what? I want my moment. I want my testimony. Because why? You serve a God that loves you, Brother Colin. And he loves me. And he loves Brother Robert. And he loves Odessa. And he loves Sister Amber. We serve a God that says, hey, it can be you today. So as they sing that song, all across this place can we lift our hands and whatever you have need of or whatever your brother or your sister has need of, can you believe it today? Can you believe that God will do it today? think you can sing or you can't or I feel in my spirit that we need to sing this as an anthem. 
And everybody, as Sister Lita leads us, can we just lift our voice and just sing, sing this through a couple of times. Get a hold of something today. Get a hold of a new faith today. Hallelujah. Can we just do that just a couple of times? You said it. I believe it. You said it. It is done. You said it. I believe it. You situation you said it I believe it hallelujah it is done hallelujah do you believe that today will you give the Lord a hand clap of praise <laughs> hallelujah <laughs> praise God praise God if you will make your way back to your seat hallelujah brother Michael Watley if you'll come and While you are uh, making your way back, you know that song doesn't say, I believe it, but when I see it, that's when it's done. You know, sometimes it's done before we even see it. So just hold on to that. Whatever you've been praying for, I've seen familiar faces come up here time after time. And ushers, you can come, go ahead and come forward. But don't get weary in your praying. Don't get weary in praying for that family member that has not come in or come back yet or even come through the doors for the first time. Don't get weary in your praying. Let's pray for this offering this morning. And, and let's, let's remember the special offering for, for Brother Proctor. I've enjoyed his uh, messages, his sermons so much. He's so funny. Just listening to him, he's so funny, but he, he, he knows what we need, church. Don't think for one minute that he's coming here just blindly. I believe that he's been talking to the Lord for, these, for, for, the, for the sermons that he's been bringing to us. But if you have a special offering that you want to give to him, make a note on an envelope. That way it gets to him. So let's go put before the Lord for this offering. Lord, I love you. I thank you, God, for what you're going to do with this offering. I pray, Lord, that you would use it, that you would multiply it, Lord, for your kingdom. Touch Brother Proctor, Lord, and bless him and his wife, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I will sing unto the Lord. You are magnificent, you are 
Praise the Lord, everybody. We have heard a message from the Lord this morning, and God has moved in a mighty way, hasn't he? Amen, amen, amen. Well, on behalf of the youth department, I've been asked to do uh, the Change War promotion uh, this Sunday. Um, and as a youth member, once again, uh, thank you all very, very much for what you all have already given I mean, it's, it's awesome, absolutely awesome. So, who's ready to see who's ahead? All right, let's go. So, one group has given a total of $313.96, and another group has given a total of $296.01, and and men, we are behind, unfortunately. <laughs> Ladies. But that puts us in total of $609.97. Amen. And we're going to invite you all to come ahead and uh, put some more into our little containers here. At this time, a couple of the promotion things that Brother Brennan made mention last week. If we hit a goal of $1,500... The winning side puts pies in the face of the losing team's members, whether that is the men or the ladies. And if we hit a goal of 2,500, Brother Brennan will get dunked in a dunk take, and I, I really want that to happen. So, amen. The Lord bless you for your giving, and Brother Michael. Hallelujah. Well, I just let Abby dunk my whole life savings into that girl's bucket. Hallelujah. So if I start getting skinny in the few weeks to come, y'all know why. Hallelujah. You may be seated for a moment. We have just a couple of announcements. We won't hold you long. 
Remember, ladies, prayer is tomorrow at 1030. Sign team practice is April 7th. I guess that's Thursday at 730. Outreach is this coming Saturday at 10 a.m. And uh, Easter service. Everybody say Easter service is coming up. Hallelujah. People that never go to church any other day will come to church on Easter. All they need is for you to ask. You know, in the restaurant business, we say you can sell a cookie or a muffin. You just got to ask them if they want it. People will come to church. You just got to say, hey, do you want it? Do you want to come to church with me? And they, they will come. So remember that. Invite people. I tell you what, it would be all right with me if we had to set out chairs this Easter Sunday. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sister Amy, if you'll come. two Sundays. So if you have a child zero to 11, we will be having an Easter egg hunt um, after Sunday school. So if you will bring me their dozen Easter eggs, you can bring them up to that Sunday morning. But if you would bring them before Easter Sunday, I would really, really appreciate that. And if you don't have a child that's in that zero to 11 bracket, if you would please purchase one large bag of candy and bring that to me, that would help me with just what he said. I'm hoping to have a lot of visitors. And if we are not using all of that candy, we are going to have a candy rain coming up pretty soon after that. So I'll use that for that. So if you can please remember to bring either your dozen eggs to me or if you if you're zero to 11 or if you are not and you don't have a child that's zero to 11, if you could bring a large bag of candy, I would greatly appreciate that. Thank you very much. Praise God. If we could all stand. Hallelujah. What a great time we've had in the house Amen. of the Lord today. Amen. Hallelujah. Remember our prayer needs, our prayer lists, the missionary that's on the back of the bulletin. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. God, we love you. We thank you for what we have felt in this place today. God, we thank you that you met us here. God, that you just poured out on us today. God, we ask you to bless each home that is represented in this place today. Let healing go forth to those that are sick in body. Bring us back at the appointed time in your great name, Jesus, we pray. And the whole church says amen. amen. Hallelujah. And there will be candy for the kids and you are dismissed.